Hi everyone, this is Kevin from Edureka and welcome to this video on what is Azure. Before we go any further guys, let's check out the agenda. In the first section, we will give you an example so that you can understand why cloud computing is better than the traditional infrastructure. And then in the next section, we will break down the concept of cloud computing. After that, we will discuss what is Azure. And then we'll give you a list of all services offered on Azure and we'll go over some of them. And then in the final section, we will see some of the companies that are using Azure and what are they using Azure for. Let's get started with the video. Let's kick things off by talking about why businesses and everybody for that matter need cloud computing. Here's an example. Meet John who's an entrepreneur who has a brilliant idea for an app which solves a problem and has a great user experience. So what does John need? John will need developers to build his app but other than that, in terms of infrastructure, he will need servers, then he will need storage devices, a dedicated network, security systems, and of course, he will need a dedicated IT operations team to monitor the whole infrastructure and make sure everything is working properly. John figured that there would be four major problems with this setup, and what are those? Let's take a look. So the first problem is that owning his own infrastructure would require a huge amount of money. And because of a huge investment in setup of the infrastructure, this would also greatly increase the risk if the app fails. Second problem is that he noticed that the infrastructure would take too long to set up as he would have to buy all the components required for his infrastructure, then hire IT technicians to install all the components and connect everything up so that everything is talking to each other and working nicely. So that means more money and more time. Next, he realized that even after the expensive setup of the infrastructure, he will have to hire a team of IT operations to work around the clock for the upkeep of the infrastructure. This would include things like resolving issues with the hardware or software, replacing broken pieces of the infrastructure so he would need to have spare parts on hand, switching to backup servers if the server goes down, preventative maintenance and so on. Means more money and more headaches when the issues crop up. Another problem has to deal with the inability of the infrastructure to scale. So what if the traffic on the servers increases or decreases abruptly? Well, if the traffic increases, he will have to scale the infrastructure to meet that demand, which means expanding the infrastructure. So buying more components, probably renting more office spaces, hiring more IT staff to monitor the expanded infrastructure and so on. But what if there's a sudden drop in the demand? All of this extra infrastructure and resources will sit idle. What about the extra people he hired? He will have to let them go? Well, it's terrible, but he may have to. Well, now let me tell you, John was smart. He did not opt for this setup. He opted for cloud computing because he was studying up on cloud computing and he found that all big and small companies that are at the top in their domains are using cloud computing. And this research into cloud computing was a real eye opener as he found that all these issues that he would face with the infrastructure that we just talked about could be solved by using the cloud. So obviously he opted for cloud. This is because there was almost no initial setup cost required and it could be done in a few minutes or hours by using a single computer. And he wouldn't need a dedicated team to take care of the physical machines because that is taken care of by the cloud provider. And finally, to John's relief, infrastructure in the cloud scales automatically as the demand changes. Isn't that freaking amazing? So why don't we find out more about cloud computing in this next section? What is cloud computing? Cloud computing is the delivery of the computing services like servers, storage, databases, networking, software, analytics, intelligence, and so on over the internet which we call colloquially the cloud. Okay, so let's understand that. John takes a computer that is connected to the internet, then he accesses the resources on cloud platform. So these resources that John needs are running on physical machines in the data center that are owned by cloud providers. So like I said before, all John needs is a computer that is connected to the internet and the remainder of the infrastructure is actually provided by the cloud provider and he can access the resources that he needs from the data center using the cloud platform. So how does this work? Well, first, John goes to the cloud provider, whichever one he likes the most, 
Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, these are the top cloud providers. So after going to the cloud provider's website, he signs up for an account and then he signs up for the services as per his requirements and configures the resources that he will need for the app to run on. And the amazing thing is that he only pays for the services that he uses and for the amount of time that those services were up for. Isn't that amazing? Of course it is. So let's now talk about what is Azure. Azure is a cloud platform that is provided by the company Microsoft from which you can rent your resources and services. So you can grab a computer that is connected to internet, then go to Azure portal on your web browser, and then access the resources that you need by signing up with Microsoft Azure. So now it's time to find out which cloud platform did John choose. It's kind of a no brainer, but here's what John says. The developers of my app and I, we all use Windows OS and other Microsoft products. So we wanted a cloud service that is best compatible with them. Can you guess which one this is? Of course, it is Microsoft Azure because it is most compatible with the Microsoft products. So before we talk about the services, why don't we find out some of the interesting things about Azure? Just like every other cloud platform, Azure provides five distinct type of services. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, container as a service, and functions as a service. Apart from that, Azure has 22 main categories of products, which we will take a look at later on. Next, Azure is operating globally in 60 plus regions and provides its services to 140 countries and counting. So just like the major cloud platforms, Azure provides pay-as-you-go plans and free plan. So there are actually no upfront fees for signing up with Azure. And you can pay as you go and only pay for the time your services are running. And just like every other cloud platform, Azure provides free basic plan, which is surprisingly good. And it is valid for 12 months. So you can tinker around and see if you like it. Okay, so what about the languages that are supported on Microsoft Azure? They are C Sharp, F Sharp, Java, TypeScript, and Python. Now let's move on to the next section where we discuss the services offered on Azure. So in the previous section, you probably remember that I mentioned that Azure has 22 categories of products. But what I did not mention is that it has over 600 services. So obviously, we are not going to be able to have enough time to discuss all 600 services. So here's your homework. Go to Azure's website and check out each of these categories and read up on them. If you have any questions, come back to this video and comment down in the section. And we will be more than happy to answer any of those for you. So I hope that you got a picture of all the categories of services provided by Microsoft Azure. So let's now go back to John. John needed three services. They were compute, networking, and storage. So let's take a look at each one of these in a little bit of a detail and then move on. So the first product that he's going to need to build his infrastructure in the cloud is compute. He can use this to deploy and manage virtual machines, containers, and batch jobs, as well as support remote application access. Compute resources created within the cloud can be configured with either public IP addresses or private IP addresses, depending on whether the resource needs to be accessible to the outside world. So some of the services that are offered within compute product are virtual machine, containers, Kubernetes service, cloud services, mobile apps. Let's move on to talk about the next, which is networking. So after setting up the virtual machines using the compute product, he will require networking in order to connect those virtual machines up so they can talk to each other and form a network. So this product gives you the ability to set up virtual networks, dedicated connections, and gateways. And it also gives you services for traffic management and diagnosis, load balancing, DNS hosting and network protection against some of the attacks like DDoS. Next one that John needs is storage, obviously, for his virtual machines so that they can store customer data and use backup storage for all of the infrastructure. So there are various services that are offered within storage, like Azure Disk Storage, Blob Storage, Azure Backup, Q Storage, and many more. This category of services provides scalable cloud storage for structured and unstructured data. It also supports big data projects, persistent storage, 
and archival storage. Similarly, there are 19 more categories that provide services that can cater to all needs of any organization or company. Which brings us to our next section, which is companies using Azure. Let's see which companies use Azure. So hundreds of big companies use Azure, but these are the ones that I picked for you guys because each one of these use Azure for a different purpose. So let's check that out. eBay has been using Azure for app development and hosting since 2010, which is the same year Microsoft announced Azure to the world. Boeing mainly uses Azure for its data analytics services for things like crew planning, maintenance optimization, fuel optimization, and crew training by building predictive models on the platform. BMW uses Azure's Internet of Things to make manufacturing process within their factories more efficient by connecting all different machines, sensors, and other devices. On the other hand, Samsung has used Azure for its smart TV infrastructure. The entire smart TV infrastructure is actually on the Azure platform. By choosing Azure, Samsung was able to achieve a significant reduction in costs and increased capacity in order to meet its rapidly growing customer base. With that, we have come to the end of this video. I hope this video piqued your curiosity, and if it did, and you would like to learn more about Azure, then I'm going to leave the links to Edureka's YouTube playlist on Azure and Edureka's blog series on Azure. And you'll find these links in the description along with a link to Azure Architect Certification. If you want to be certified in Azure, then this is going to be very helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy learning.